Greetings everyone! Welcome to the final part of the case of the Pirate Princess. It's been an interesting journey for our three detectives. Before we see how it ends, let's recap the last issue. After successfully integrating themselves into the crew, the Chaotix begin formulating some kind of plan. They let Echo and Razor in on it. Whatever it is, they have to do it soon because despite Dina's warnings, Shellbreaker hopes for the ultimate prize, a powerful weapon that will allow him and his crew to have anything they want. The issue starts once more with Vector narrating in Fantasy Vision. Only this time, said Vision looks awfully familiar. You betrayed Shiva, Shellbreaker! Back in reality, once Vector gets it in his head that he's a detective first, he accompanies everyone into the temple. According to the pirates, this one's fancier than the previous locations they visited, so something valuable must be inside, right? Wrong. There is only an empty room, save for this cracked orb. Shellbreaker doesn't want to give up and has everyone start searching. They come across more writing and Dina's forced to translate. Something about a resting hero and darkness becoming light, it eh, doesn't seem important. The Chaotix and their allies prepare to make their move. They have to act carefully around these pirates, you see. Or we can have the bee fly up to the captain and ask for the keys under the supposed pretense that he needs to go to the restroom. I say supposed because later on, Charmy implies he did need to go to the restroom. Anyway, when that doesn't work, he just takes them. The assault begins, catching most of the pirates off guard. Razor's injured thanks to Opal's stingers. I have to say, Dina's water umbrella packs quite a punch. Echo lays down cover fire with her laser lance before running away with everyone else. Dina seals the door with the understanding that they will return with the proper authorities. Mr. Bristles has other ideas. This does allow Razor to actually say goodbye to Blade this time. I say, Echo's been a bit busy, you know, with tying up Dive and wrecking their longboat. They reach the ship and they need to get a move on because the pirates are coming. And they do not care about the damaged longboat. To add another headache to the situation, Shellbreaker has the startup sequence password protected. He had the foresight that someone might steal the ship. During the panic, Vector addresses the one person not freaking out, because said person knows the password. Isn't that right, Princess? In a nice touch, an earlier panel shows everyone going nuts except her. She's like, I have the password, all you have to do is ask. Now get this, the password is Chowder spelled backwards! <laughs> With that, our heroes escape. Stranded on the island, the pirates have time to reflect. Opal's bummed about losing her stuff, not to mention liking Dina and the bee. Blade hoped she and Razor would reconcile, but it looks like that's not happening now. Shellbreaker shows some minor respect for the Chaotix, since they would have made good pirates based on their actions, but is still miffed at the betrayal. Mr. Bristles notes that they've been through worse and they will recover. And Dive's still tied up. Back on the ship, everyone pats themselves on the back. Well, mostly Dina's. Despite going through all that, Dina's still going to continue her world travels. The reason? Her strict parents weren't fond of her going to school on the surface. Having her come back could mean a strict lockdown. Dina hopes to one day be Marapis' ambassador. Until then, she will see what the surface has to offer. Besides, she convinces Echo to join her as a personal bodyguard, and she has her own ship now. Razor and the Chaotix say their goodbyes before heading to Marapis to go home and collect the money respectively. Upon returning to Westopolis, the Chaotix go to a bank to convert sand dollars into ordinary dollars. Based on their reactions, it seems to be a pretty poor exchange rate, so no 32-bit game consoles or functional locks for these guys. The issue, and the arc, ends with more vector narration, that they will always help clients because it's the right thing to do, and not for the money. Though in the end, it's totally about the money. The issue subverted my expectations. You would expect something like, say, Abyss showing up out of the blue, or the mysterious weapon being so dangerous that the heroes and the pirates team up to defeat it, and they all become friends and such in the process. None of that happened. Some of you may disagree with me on this, and it's your right, but I'm glad it didn't happen. This arc is first and foremost a fun chaotic story about rescuing a princess with these pirates as the antagonist, ones we've gotten to know throughout the arc, but antagonists nonetheless. 
Having some last minute threat pop up would have ruined it for me. Some people may have been disappointed that the room with the supposed weapon was empty, except for the cracked spear. I've read somewhere that it might come up in the future. Otherwise, it's just one of those things best left up to speculation on what happened here. Let's move on to the characters, except for the Chaotix. It's a foregone conclusion that they will return to the status quo. And dive because he's been tied up throughout this issue. As I said earlier, Opal's the one most bummed about the betrayal, but takes it in stride. You almost feel sorry for Blade because she lost her brother again, until you remember she's a world-hurting bully. And that's why the two don't get along anymore. She's unable to escape that mindset while Razor looks to the future. And that future, for the moment, is being Coral's bodyguard and possibly something more. Mr. Bristles is the most optimistic. He mentions that they've come back from worse, presumably the Abyss joining Eggman thing, and they can do it again. This leaves Shellbreaker. With this latest betrayal, not to mention not finding anything of value and losing his ship, he might become even more fanatical. I feel sorry for the poor schmoes who might come across these pirates. Echo shows off some skills, though I think she's a bit trigger-happy. I went back to Ways of Change, and yes, the weapons the guards have fire lasers. It's just that they have a different color in this issue. Level settings, perhaps? Or realistically, just having different colorists on the issues. She finds new purpose at the end by becoming Dina's personal bodyguard. So this means if and when we see Dina in a brief cameo during another person's story, we'll see Echo with her probably reacting to something the princess does or the sights in a comedic fashion. Speaking of the princess, while she did need rescuing, she wasn't the typical damsel in distress. She managed to keep the pirates on a treasure hunt to prevent them from causing harm, made sure to keep them off the Chaotix back, and ultimately provided key info for the escape. Sometimes it helps to be in the right place at the right time. And hey, she still has a means of free travel, so she got what she wanted. My final score is an 8. This was a fun arc to read after all of the Shattered World-related content these past few issues. As I said in the beginning of this arc, we got to see the Chaotix take on a non-world-saving case for a change. The pirate characters were interesting, and a door has been left open for their possible return. I've stated in the past that we need more antagonists not linked to Eggman. And this group qualifies. Adam's art is getting better each issue, and the wife and husband writing team of Aaliyah and Ian should be done in more of these books. But that's my opinion. Go read this story arc yourself if you haven't already, especially if you're a Chaotix fan. Next time, we start a new arc that has members of the Freedom Fighters on their own individual journeys. Until then, have a good day, and be safe. Tina, I know you have some hidden tricks, but please, stop staring into my soul!